moving. When I um, two stocks that the stocks that fundamentally attract me or conceptually attract me are those that are exposed to international trade without assuming commodity price risk, those stocks that are undertaking significant restructure or capex programs, and moreover in their, they're in year two or three of those programs, and to date have met expectations, and moreover management have credibility last year through the programs they've been undertaking. And two stocks that have met that criteria have been Origin and Institec Pivot. I'd like to talk, talk about another stock that I've identified, and that's Askiana. Askiana is Australia's largest rail and ports operator. Basically, 50% of its earnings come from containerized, containerized businesses, which are driven by Australian economic growth and also are a beneficiary of the deindustrialisation de of Australia as product is imported and then shipped across Australia. 50% of its earnings are driven by global demand for mineral commodities, particularly coal, and also soft products such as grain. So Askiana was spun off from toll in 2007, initially had some problems in the market because it assumed more, uh, too much debt. They had significant equity raises throughout 2009, and then they had a management term, term turnover where they appointed John Mullins CEO in February 2011. Malcolm Broomhead, who had a good reputation with Orica, came in in September 2011, and has now got a market capitalisation of about $6 billion. If you look at the financials for Askiana, you'd say the results have been solid without being spectacular. And their guidance for FY15, which they reaffirmed to the AGM last week, was for EBIT growth marginally above 5%. And they said that growth was to come through despite constrained demand environment, particularly from wheat grain shipments and intermodal transport. But interestingly, coal in the first quarter of September, of the financial year September, was the volume shipped were actually up 7% on a year ago. And the share prices, uh, notwithstanding these relatively benign financial results, the share price has outperformed in the last two years. So, so what's the attractions of Askiana? And I think there's four key ones. The strength of its marketing, market positioning, the cost savings program that's embarked on, and the strength of its cash flow uh, forecast and also the balance sheet, and its undemanding investment metrics. In terms of the strength of its market positioning, the major business unit is the Pacific National Coal. That represents about 45% of its earnings. It's got a market share of about 70% in New South Wales, 30% in Queensland. It's been gaining share in Queensland since Queensland Rail was floated. Most importantly, 90% of its contracts have take or pay clauses, and the average duration of those contracts are eight years. So there's a lot of talk about the soft coal price, but you've got to bear in mind that mines are working harder to get the maximum volume out. And at this point in time, because of growth of mines that have come on stream in the last few years, building up to maximum production, and also miners wishing to produce as much as they can, volumes have been quite solid for the Pacific National. There's you know, the other business, the rail side, looks after bulk freight, etc. You know, on the East Coast and in Western Australia, it uh, has been strong at some point of time, but it's been weak of late because of uh, the downturn and the investment in Gordon. The other, the other side of the business is the terminal logistics business. It's got 50% market share with the, across the major Australian ports. Historically, it's been in a duopoly with DPW, but there's been new entrants coming to the market. Interestingly, since those are new entrants in Brisbane and uh, Sydney, uh, Ashkiana has actually retained its market share. And 70% of the contracts it holds run until at least 2018. And that, uh, that division also has been uh, the benefit of a major CapEx program in terms of automating the facility, the port facilities. Now, the cost savings program 
In 2011, the company announced a five-year program to reduce its cost base by 160 million. In short, in year three, the, the last results in 2014, they've achieved gains of 115, so they're well on track, and they actually double the size of the target for 2016. Companies don't make announcements like that without a fair degree of confidence they'll achieve it. In other words, to go from 160 to 300 million in the same time frame is fairly ambitious, but also should give markets a degree of confidence. Cash flow on the balance sheet. As I said, there's also been a significant CapEx program since the new management team came into place in terms of renewing the asset base. The CapEx program that I spend is over to, uh, to date has totaled two and a half billion. Its CapEx will be in FY415, is forecast to be about another 600 million, and then it will decline quite substantially. With the debt falling from a net debt to either DA DA a ratio of about three currently, down to about two in 2017. Interestingly, the S&P just upgraded their uh, rating at Pascal, and uh, interesting to everyone would be that the, the, the dividend payout ratio, which had been constrained, because they undertook this CapEx and, uh, program, the company itself has said that they will expand that to at least 50% by 2016. Um, yeah, on top of that, there is potential for Mascara to sell down their towage interest and uh, to a strategic partner, and uh, that, that will certainly be advantageous to enable them to do strategic acquisitions. But they did say they won't do those until the balance sheet objectives have been achieved. In terms of the investment metrics, going forward, you can see the dividend yield creeping up because the payout ratio will go up, PE ratio. 2017-16 is, I'd say, relatively benign, no, relatively attractive. The costs down haven't been factored, but may surprise the market. They may be able to hold more than, more than they give back to the market. And as I say, they've got very strong exposure to grain, and grain, coal, etc. And management have delivered, and the management team are very well regarded in the, in the investment community. So it's one stop I think you should look at. Uh, and that'll just turn out.